Hey, Jane, thanks for finding that journal article for me. I just gave it to my students. You gave it to your students? Well, technically, I posted it online for them. Oh, boy. Did you check with the copyright holder to see if it's okay to post that article? <laughs> what do you mean? Since journal articles are copyright protected, you may need the copyright holder's permission to share them. Uh, no problem. I'm using it for educational purposes, so I don't need permission? Actually, Tim, your copyright responsibilities are quite clear. Article 1, Section 8 of the U.S. Constitution gives Congress the power to promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing, for limited times, for authors and inventors... Wow. I see your lips moving. Nothing? Yeah, Zilgerino. Hmm. Want to learn about copyright in five minutes or less? Uh, okay. Copyright holders have the exclusive right to copy, distribute, display, and perform their work. And they have an exclusive right to create a derivative work, like when a book is made into a movie. This is why you likely need permission if you want to share copyrighted material. Well, aren't there special exceptions for colleges and universities? Definitely. Section 108 of the U.S. Copyright Act addresses archiving, replacing lost, damaged, or obsolete copies in interlibrary loans. Section 109 permits the resale or lending of copies of works. Section 110 permits certain types of content use in classrooms and distance education. And of course, Section 107 is all about fair use. Doesn't fair use give us the right to share content without getting permission or paying royalties to the copyright holder? It depends. Even if it's for educational purposes, no particular use automatically qualifies as fair use. You need to consider four factors detailed by the U.S. Copyright Act. The first is the purpose and character of the use. For example, if the use is intended to help derive financial or other business benefit, then it is less likely to be a fair use, even in an educational setting. If it transforms the original, such as analyzing or criticizing the work rather than just copying it, it is more likely to be a fair use. Next is the nature of the copyrighted work. For instance, the use of a purely factual work is more likely to be fair use than the use of a creative work. Third. The more the work that is used, then it is less likely to be a fair use. Even a small portion may be too much if what is used is the heart of the work. And finally, you need to consider the effect of the use on the market or the potential market. If your use might result in economic loss to the copyright holder, then it is less likely to be a fair use. No single factor is enough. You have to weigh all four in order to determine if the use is really fair use. Wow, I didn't know that. Many people confuse the physical ownership of a book or a DVD with owning the copyright to that work. The first sale doctrine permits lending, reselling, and disposing of the copy you own, but it does not give you the right to copy or reproduce the material, publicly display it, perform it, or exercise any of the copyright holder's other exclusive rights. Attribution is another area of confusion. People think that if they just cite their source, they're good to go. But attribution is not a substitute for copyright permission. And just because you've found it in a book or on the internet doesn't mean a work is copyright free. Don't be confused. The public domain only comprises those works that are either no longer protected by copyright or never were. I don't worry about getting permission. Uh, when I post reading materials on our course management system, they're password protected, so access is limited to my students. Smart move, John. But password protecting material does not replace the need for getting copyright permission. We have a responsibility to respect the rights of copyright holders no matter how we share their work. So when you say copyrighted work, what do you mean? Copyright protection applies to all types of content, whether it's in print, electronic, online, or any other format. These materials are typically protected for 70 years after the author's death. There are circumstances that may extend the term to 95 years from publication or 120 years from creation, whichever is shorter. But not everything is protected by copyright. Ideas, facts, and data are not. Logos and taglines aren't either, although they may be protected by trademark law. Anything created by the U.S. government is not covered by copyright law, nor are works for which the copyright has expired. For my classes, I mostly use content from books and journal articles I wrote, so that whole copyright thing doesn't really apply to me. Who would I pay royalties to, myself? <laughs> are you sure you're the copyright holder? While some authors do retain the rights to their own works, many actually sign over those rights to their publishers. Depending on your contract, you may still need to get permission and even pay royalties to the publisher for the use of that work. Most people don't want to violate copyright law. They just aren't conscious of how the law affects everyday use of material.
Sure, but who's really going to know if we illegally share content? Does it really matter? Oh, it matters. It's the law. Violating copyright law can put you and the entire institution at financial risk if a copyright holder decides to sue us. But maybe the most important reason is that it's the right thing to do. Many people on this campus, including yourself, are content creators. We expect people to respect our intellectual property rights. Shouldn't we respect theirs? And instill that same respect in our students who themselves may be content creators someday? Copyright ensures that the valuable material we all rely on will continue to be available for years to come. Our needs are served by the work of copyright holders, and the royalties we pay fuel further content development. That actually makes sense to me. Thanks, Jane. So how do we do the right thing? Definitely read our campus copyright policy. And if you ever need help or are unclear about your copyright responsibilities, you can always ask me or any of the library staff. We love this.